He was the president of the FAA Region 1. Uh, he, he's got a PhD in Business Administration and an MBA from Harvard. He's got 20 years worth of uh, experience in various managerial positions, as well as sponsoring the FAA University, uh, and is a member of the World Council for Automobile Mobility and Tourism. And he's here today to talk to us about uh, electrification and the consumer perspective on that. Gary. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I fear I will have to repeat a couple of things that already have been said this morning. And uh, hopefully, uh, I hope not to be too boring. Um, the agenda of today is to say a couple of words about what is the FIA, and in particular the Region 1. Talk to you about what we see as the future mobility challenges that we are facing and in that frame share with you what are the consumer attitudes and choices that we observe. And last, a chapter that is very important in our opinion, that is communication, information, education in order to raise the user acceptance of the new mobilities uh, challenges that are lying ahead. Region 1 is uh, a consumer body. FIA is most well known for its regulatory role on sporting events like Formula One, the World Rally Championship and things like that. But we also have another pillar on which we are working which is what we call the mobility uh, activities where we do provide services to our members and it's not less than 38 million members that we are serving throughout that full region. The mission of the FIA is to support our members, providing strategic advice, sharing knowledge, developing a responsive network platform, facilitating uh, venues for innovation, lobbying for the mobile consumer. In Brussels, my office of the Region 1 is counting no less than 20 people lobbying daily with the European administration while at the same time keeping the individual needs and motivation of a variety of different stakeholders in mind. Now, in what frame do we evolve? We are mainly influenced by the targets that the European Union has set. And by 2020, the objective is to reduce by another 20% the greenhouse gas emissions. By 2020, 10% share of renewable energy in the transport sector. And longer term objective is that by 2050, 80 to 95 percent reduction of the greenhouse gas emission in comparison to the level we had in 1990. Interesting is the question how much have we progressed so far? Uh, from 1990 up to 2015, we have reduced gas uh, emissions by about 20 percent. So we may speak about cheating for some car manufacturers eventually, but nonetheless, there has been already a major reduction since 1990. The European Union for 2011 also has written an, en an energy roadmap in terms of energy efficiency, renewable and nuclear energy, and carbon capture and storage in the more traditional production units. For us, in transportation, we have to bear in mind that the urbanization of the world, that's another statistics of the United Nations, that by 2030, 65% of the world's population will be living in large urban areas. 23% of the CO2 emissions are coming from these urban areas. And so the white paper of the European Union, cities will have to contribute more to achieve the 60% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. We will have for that to halve use of conventionally fueled cars by 2030. So that's 15 years. That's quick, you know. And uh, if you look at the penetration of electrical cars and hybrid cars as of today, we saw some numbers yesterday, 1%, 1.5%. There is still a long way to go if you want to reach 50%. The 
There is also an announcement uh, at the EU level for a framework for urban access and restrictions. You can imagine that in a, a free trade zone as the European Union, if one city starts to have its own regulation on taxing vehicles entering into the area, or the intelligent tolling system for trucks and for cars, uh, that means that cars and trucks are going to be GPS traced and that you can charge the usage of the car rather than the ownership of the car. In an area like Europe, it needs to be coordinated so that each country applies similar rules and that you don't need to have a truck driver with 27 different devices that uh, you should buy and have 27 times different type of invoices for uh, the toll charges that you would have to, uh, to pay. Truck tracing is working in Germany uh, for now two years and is going to be extended to France, Italy, uh, Spain, uh, the Benelux uh, as of the 1st of uh, January, no, 1st of April. 2016 and cars are going to be followed soon in 2017 or 18. So it is also uh, uh, the impact of technology and digitalization that allows this uh, without having heavy infrastructure investment to be done because it's all software and tracing that can be used. But politicians and technicians do believe studies have been done in that way, that you can change the motorist behavior by charging the toll at a higher price when you drive your car at peak hours and give rebates when you are driving your car outside the peak hours. And that is very interesting because if you look at the evolution of transport in the coming years in Europe, the commuter volume will remain very stable for the next 15 years. But the free time need for transportation will increase. And that has to do with the aging population that still is in very good health, still very rich. And they will spend money for their free time. And for that, they want to, to take their car whenever they want. Statistics shows that today already, at peak hour time, 30% of the cars in the queues are people traveling for free time and are not commuters. So, such system could educate these people to travel outside peak hours and reduce the traffic during congestion hours. The world we are living in is changing and changing very fast. In many of the presentations that we have seen, you will recognize many of the topics that I have here. Connectivity is one of the most important. If I say that tomorrow we can trace the cars in Europe, well, by the 1st of January 2017, all cars sold in Europe need to be equipped with the facility of the e-call. The e-call is the emergency call, means that if a car has an accident, the car will send a signal telling the authorities where it is located and what the force of the impact was so that you immediately know what kind of rescue team you need to deploy to send to uh, that motorist. That of course is uh, also uh, a aim of the European Union to continue to reduce the fatalities and on a road accident and that you can send a rescue team also during the night when eventually there is less traffic and that nobody has seen that a car has been accidented. But connectivity is also, you know, very important in the world of what we call the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is not limited to the coffee machine that is linked to your smartphone so that you can program it to have a fresh coffee when you stand up in the morning, but it's also traffic lights that can be monitored in a more intelligent way. Because cars being connected can tell the density of the traffic to the system, 
traffic lights can be managed automatically so that the flow of traffic is uh, more open uh, during uh, the flow entering into the city in the morning and reversing uh, the frequency of uh, these same traffic lights during the evening peak so that the flow is eased during the peak hour of uh, the uh, of the evening. Automation is also uh, another topic that will come quite rapidly. Automation on motorway first because the obstacles and the, the hectic situations of downtown areas is much more complex to be managed and we still need more connectivity of things in the cities before we can reach it. But every single technological item, item that you need to have a car driving in full autonomy exists already over today. If you buy a small Series 2 of BMW today, it's already equipped with a queue management facility. It means if you are in a traffic queue, you just push the button, queue function, and the car locked itself to the car in front of it with ultrasonic sensor, keeps the distance, the car in front of you stops, your car stops. The car starts, the car restarts, there is a little curve, turns right or left, the car follows. You just, for safety reasons, need to keep a hand on the steering wheel still, you know. But many people start then to read their mails and things like that. So the technology is there, it's just a, a matter of years that more cars uh, be connected that way, more cars can uh, uh, engender uh, uh, and uh, take on the information that will be floating around. So, digitalization has a major impact on the future and uh, it's not only for driving your car because that digitalization brings a lot of new opportunities. Just like the presentation of Frost and Sullivan that we just saw, it's offering new business models and car sharing is one of these business models. Drivers sharing like the Uber Ride the services that uh, you can see around the world. Ride sharing is another way. Blabacar is very popular in Europe nowadays and in Blabacar uh, is, uh, I say, I'm driving from Paris to Marseille uh, and uh, I am alone in my car. Is anybody wanting to drive with me? It's welcome. But the system goes further in the sense that you can create communities and uh, 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 travel with people that you like more than others. In that sense, you start to describe your own profile. I don't like to travel with pets. I am a smoker. I rather listen to rock and roll music. Uh, I don't like to talk when I drive. You know, and you try to find then a match among people that are likewise and thinking likewise so that that community activity starts to increase your level of comfort and satisfaction when you are using that. Aging population, I spoke about it. Uh, safety and security, I had it about uh, the, the, the eco. But what is really booming nowadays is sharing and the multimodality. And really, if we are looking at uh, how the mobility can evolve in the coming years, it's really through these uh, multimodality uh, hubs that uh, are going to appear. Uh, hubs are going to be created around uh, central uh, train stations uh, or uh, important uh, underground uh, station so that complementary services to the public transportation that remains a mass transportation service can be complemented by sharing a bicycle, sharing a car, renting a car, uh, sharing a ride. All these services should find their places in uh, such uh, uh, areas. This is a model that uh, is taken over from uh, uh, Germany in the precedent uh, presentation we had a show uh, uh, on the uh, penetration of electrical cars in Germany that appears to be very low and there is a massive use of electrical cars in Germany but they are not owned by private person, they are owned by a company and they are shared 
and the most important players are car to go belongs to Daimler Benz, and uh, Drive Now, which belongs to uh, BMW, and Audi Quiet, which belongs to Audi. And uh, this is very much concentrated in the centrum of large cities, so where there is a firm belief that sharing these cars will help to fight against congestions. Bear in mind, 30% of cars driving in cities in Europe are looking for a parking spot. A shared car can be placed up to 9 to 10 cars. So it's also addressing the problem of parking accessibility that uh, needs to be addressed in our world. I've spoken about connectivity, multimodality. Of course, decarbonization is also at the center of uh, uh, what uh, we try to do but also because of the price of driving a car and that is not just the cost of hybrid cars or electrical cars that driving a car will become more expensive it's also because the authorities are going to make driving a car more expensive as I told you, uh, toll, road toll, intelligent road toll is going to be uh, harmonized uh, and uh, applied in, uh, in Europe uh, and you have to bear in mind that with the decarbonization and if we reach the aim of having 50% of electrical cars or hybrid cars in the future the heavy excises and taxes that are levied on oil product in Europe will need to be compensated one way or another you are living in a country where you don't raise a lot of taxes on these fuels whereas in Europe on one liter of petrol you pay up to 80% of taxes. So that's also giving room in a first phase to give incentives in an easier way uh, as there is room to work on these taxes but quite rapidly the authorities will need to replace this income by other incomes of another nature and that will be the total uh, payment of road usage. Now, about the consumer attitude. One thing, consumer is not really uh, knowledgeable about technology. Sullivan and Frost, you say, you know, they, they want a, a, a diesel hybrid. But an hybrid and a diesel engine is technolo technologically nonsense. If you look at the torque curve of a diesel engine uh, on a petrol engine, the addition of an electrical uh, engine gives the shape of a diesel torque curve to a petrol engine and that's where most of the benefit is coming out it's a combination of the two that works uh, most uh, of the time uh, and by the way uh, Peugeot Citroën, the PSA group to respond to the customer demand in France has been building these diesel hybrids and now has decided to stop the production of these diesel hybrids it's too expensive and inefficient um, in comparison to the pure diesel uh, engine and I'm not going to enter into the considerations of the diesel emissions and uh, all the stuff that uh, lays behind. But what we show here is a survey uh, lesser recent than the one we have seen uh, in the preceding uh, presentation about what are the criteria of selecting a car the most important features for a new car according to consumers. It's still the consumption, safety and the running cost. These are the three most important. On the extreme right, you have the CO2 emissions. It's a little bit contradictory because when you look at the first one, it's the consumption. So if you have a lower consumption, obviously you will have a lower emission. But what it says out of that study is that the customer doesn't have a clue about what his car is emitting and what is the technology that is uh, running on his car. That is the conclusion we have to draw from that. The study was done by the Giant Research Commission, that's uh, a European Union uh, group. Uh, so the survey is addressing the main uh, countries throughout the, the 27 members and the four most important 
uh, things that you can get out of it is finally that 48% of the customers, or potential customers, are absolutely not familiar with electrical car. So that's more in relation with what we saw yesterday. There is a lack of knowledge in the market, which means that if we want to progress, there is a big need of information and education on that. And even more, you know, if you if you take a driver with a light food or a driver with a heavy food on a diesel car, that may give you a difference of 10% in consumption. On a petrol car, that can go up to 20%. But on an electrical car, that can go up to 200%. So it's not only educating people about knowing what electrical cars and hybrid cars are capable of doing, but it's also educating them at how you have to drive these cars, because the driving attitude is totally different than the one you have with classical cars. And as we have such a long history and background and education with classical cars, you know, it will be difficult to make a step forward in educating people using these new vehicles. 39% do consider electric car as an next purchase. So that confirms what Frost and Sullivan said in a more recent study. So that trend was already uh, visible. It's also uh, the perception that the use of electrical car is more envisaged in the use of urban areas rather than uh, for a long uh, journey. And quite often comes as a second or a third car that would be used uh, to commute every single day uh, in the city. But again, I'm coming back, if you replace every existing car by electrical cars, it's not a solution for traffic congestion because there, there, there would be as many cars as in the past, so you still need to work on other things like car sharing, continue to improve public transportation and enhance the multimodality. The city that is most advanced in the multimodality nowadays is Helsinki. Helsinki where uh, the concept of mobility as a service uh, has been developed from last year. And uh, when I, uh, the best way to explain this is you, you start from the hypothesis that everybody has a smartphone so you can download your app. And when you want to move from A to B, the app will tell you what is the best way to go there and by which transportation means. The, the app will tell you, you walk to the next bus stop. You take the bus, you take the underground, you step out of the underground, you take a bicycle and there you are. That's the fastest and the cheapest way. What does the system as well? It's a common payment system. You don't have to pay again to uh, pay the bus, pay the metro, pay the, the rental of the bicycle, no, it's all paid by your application, you reserve the trajectory, and everything will be taken away from uh, your credit card account. So, use of comfort, facility, that requires that all the data that you use from public transportation and private company is mixed, made available, so that the neighbors can use that and offer that as a service to the consumer. Battery electric vehicle, here is another uh, survey, uh, I'm sorry I haven't uh, talked a lot about uh, NAF because uh, 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 author yesterday uh, uh, gave us his full presentation so I'm not going to repeat what uh, uh, he has said uh, yesterday. Other members of the FIA, uh, the German, Italians, uh, Dutch and uh, Austrian have made a large survey about uh, existing uh, battery electric vehicle in practice and uh, what is uh, the, uh, the critique and the observation is still the acquisition cost that is perceived as a, uh, an obstacle and so incentives are required. The energy cost uh, when using the car is lower than a diesel car so that is attractive but the achievable range is uh, severely limited. So, an electrical car, battery only, cannot be the car that will replace the traditional car with a petrol engine. Charging and convenience is also very important. 
And that is also a very important point in car sharing, because car sharing can only be a success if you have a free float model. A free float model means that you take your smartphone, you have the Google map with all the flags where these cars are located, and they may be located wherever you want. And you just select one of these little flags, the car is yours, you go to the car, you swipe your phone, the car is opening, and you go. And when you are at destination, you drop the car where you are, not at a specific space. That's the ultimate quality uh, of a car sharing with a free fluid system. Of course, if these cars are electric, you better stop at a place where there is a charging pool. And that's where car to go and drive now from Denver and BMW are really working together with large cities to implement as many uh, charging uh, pools uh, as possible in the downtown areas of uh, these large uh, cities. As a lobbying organization, of course, we talk a lot uh, with uh, the European uh, Commission and uh, our attitude is, of course, to be technology neutral because we believe that we need to leave the game open to all kinds of technologies. So, we, of course, are open to electrical vehicles, to the hybrid vehicles, to the plug-in hybrid vehicles, but also we have to include the fuel cell. We saw yesterday in the presentation of Toyota, fuel cell is also promised through a, a brilliant uh, future, providing the infrastructure of the logistic of uh, uh, fueling hydrogen will be built. The limited compromise on value proposition, costs, the battery, the charging, supporting development of competitive sector. There is a need, of course, of standardization and uh, technology neutral specifications and uh, battery pack open standards so that uh, we achieve a larger volume of production that can produce economies of scales in the benefit of the consumer. Raising the user acceptance, you understand that this is probably one of the most important points if you want uh, the transfer to be successful. It's the awareness and the information that is available niche markets, procurement, fleets, car share. We need a transport cost and environment impact. Zero emission, carbon rating, battery process, what is zero emission? Uh, if you use uh, kilowatts that are produced by uh, a coal uh, uh, power generator, uh, it's not really uh, CO2 friendly. Uh, uncertainties, affordability, efficiency, durability, warranty, residual value. That's one of the main topic. Is the residual value. Uh, today, when you buy a new car, the uh, uh, average, average age of a car park in Europe is 8 years. So, in theory, after 8 years, the uh, consumer is changing its car. But it is considered that after 8 years, the value of an electrical car or uh, hybrid car is sufficient uh, and uh, that is quite different from a traditional car where you still have a residual value that can reach 30% of the initial value of the purchase. And unfortunately that is confirmed by a leasing company that when they calculate the leasing of a petrol engine or diesel engine uh, car, they include a residual value in their calculation which makes the car affordable on a monthly Rate. But if you buy an electrical car, the value they put in their calculation after four years, after four years is, is zero. <coughs> Some tests of acceptance. Uh, these are a couple of examples of things that can be done and that we work with. The smart SEM is the smart connected electromobility. Uh, these are the cities of Barcelona, Newcastle, uh, two others I've forgotten the name. Uh, but demonstrate that ICT solution can alleviate shortcomings of electromobility and improving public acceptance and take up. It's helping them in the navigation. It's not that we have to reinvent the GPS, but on the GPS you can uh, point it where charging points are, what is the shortest way to get to the next charging station. You could also 
uh, send them to the charging station that is free and not arriving at the charging station. Get them. There is somebody already charging his car here. Efficient driving, as I say, 200% difference uh, uh, can exist between the light food or the heavy food on the gas pedal.